Hello everyone, welcome to Keen Ear. Now this is a response video to James Griffiths, who quite a while back now at this point in time, he posted a couple of videos both on the same subject of problematic bands and problematic artists and just general musicians that he doesn't see eye to eye with, I guess. And I will leave a link in the description if you haven't checked out his videos yet. You know, they're well worth taking a look at. And uh, for the sake of this video, I'm just going to be focusing on bands. You know, no solo artists this time around. Maybe in a future video I'll do that. But uh, initially I wanted to respond sooner to James's video, but at first I felt like perhaps there just wasn't enough bands that I kind of felt that way towards, you know, or, or whatever, you know, was a bit critical towards. But then as time marched forward and as the weeks, weeks and months went by and as the seasons changed, eventually I developed quite a substantial list of groups you know for the for the sake of this video that I could kind of talk about it just they just kind of developed in my head over time I guess I guess James's video kind of did kind of resonate with me to some degree you know whenever I was bored at work in particular I'd think about you know what bands I could incorporate and what the reasons why I could talk about them and that sort of thing so so yeah it, was, it sort of stemmed really from that and uh, I just want to make a few things kind of clear before I, you know, go any further. And I, you know, if you're somebody who is kind of very thin-skinned, you know, you're somebody who doesn't take criticism very well, you know, and uh, even if it's very mild criticism aimed at a group that you just so happen to to like, then maybe this isn't a video for you. Maybe you can you know, just go off and you know, trim your toenails or something like that. But I, I genuinely don't intend to. You know, set out to make this video to to upset people or, or to, to rub people up the wrong way or anything like that. Hopefully this video comes across as at least somewhat respectable and, and somewhat balanced and somewhat fair, but at the same time, you know, I'll put my point across, you know, the issues that I have with these particular bands. So anyway, let's kind of get on with it, shall we? The first thing I want to uh, talk about is that you know, with this video, besides everything I've talked about at this point, is that uh, these bands are in no particular order or anything like that. You know, I'm not ranking these from best to worst or whatever. So we'll start with the first group, which is none other than The Who. Sorry, I sound a little bit like an owl when I said that, but yeah, The Who, the legendary 1960s UK-based band. And out of all the groups that sort of reach that sort of category, you know, uh, 60s, legendary, you know, UK based, you know, you think of the Beatles, you think of the Rolling Stones, you know, and that kind of thing, you know, the, they're the big boys, but the Who are very much part of that as well, and, and the Who are really the exception, well, one of the exceptions to the rules of, of a group that I just don't really go along with that well, I just don't see eye to eye with, and I'm not, not too sure why that is, which is, I've just never really been a particularly big fan, unfortunately, I'm, I'm not too sure why it just hasn't happened, and I, and I guess, uh, you know, a few years ago, actually, I, I I went out and I, you know, decided to, you know, just keep an eye out for some Who records. I did uh, do some research on what was considered their best album. And, you know, if if, if I found any of, of, of the selection that I managed to unearth, you know, I'd kind of add them to the collection. And one of the albums I found when I was out and about is this. It's Who's Next, often regarded as the very, very best album that the Who ever created. And I really thought the stage was set when I got my hands on this. You know, I thought I'll listen to this and then I'll become a, a fan of the Who, and you know, it'll be it'll be the the key to the door to unlock, you know, the the, the group for me, and then it'll send me on the road to to fandom, I suppose, which just didn't really happen. I listened to this and I thought, yeah, it's fair enough, but it, it didn't really blow me socks off. Maybe I had maybe a bit too high expectations for it because I was reading all these comments saying oh it's the best album of all time and you know this is the album that that, that that made the who and i guess it is the album that made the who it's just not the album that made the who for me personally i guess you know this was a big huge hit particularly in the uk but it just doesn't do it for me i feel the very same way about this album as i feel about the group as a whole really you know in that i respect the group and i like the group to a certain degree the same way that I like, you know, and respect this album, but it, it just kind of feels a bit short, you know, it feels like it comes a bit short for me, and it, it just doesn't quite reach the heights that I wish it would kind of, I was expecting it would reach, and yeah, I'm just, I'm just left a little bit cold by it in the end, so it's a bit of a shame, I suppose, but it's just the way it is, maybe one day the penny will drop, and I'll become a 
bit of a fan of the Who, but you know, I got my hands on this and I was expecting, you know, to, for more to follow, you know, more Who albums to be added to the collection. You know, this is it, this is the extent of my collection of Who records, you know, it was born and it died with this album. You know, I just didn't bother buying anything else. I did have my eye on the Who sell out at one point in time, but you know, it just I just didn't get, you know, I just didn't bother with it in the end. It's a bit unfortunate really, you know, it just it just all stopped with this. Not to say that this is the only album by the Who I've ever listened to. I've listened to other albums by them on online. It's just in terms of buying their records, this is it, this is the end of the story. And I guess there's one thing to be, you know, respectful of when it comes to the Who without any question or shadow of that. It's the fact they're still going, which is pretty incredible. You know, I always appreciate longevity in, in the world of rock and roll. And you've got a uh, you know, you've got Townsend and, and Dolce still, you know, shining the light of of the of the of, of the group, you know, and keeping the legend alive. You know, maybe they should change the name from the Who to the Few, perhaps, because there's only two of them going. But then again, you could say that about the Stones, you know, unfortunately, you know, with Charlie passing away. You know, you've only got Mick and Mick and Keith still going. Uh, obviously Bill Wyman's still going, you know, of the original lineup. But, you know, he hasn't been in the group for donkeys years now. But anyway, we're not here to talk about the Stones. So we'll, we'll move on quickly to the next group I want to talk about, which is U2. Uh, pretty, again, a fairly, obviously these are going to be, con it depends who you are, controversial these are. If you don't give a toss about, pink, you know, uh, U2 or The Who, it's going to be a pretty, pretty easy going, I guess. But anyway, U2 are definitely a group that I, I have, some issues with not major issues i think they're a very good band i just don't think they're great and i think that i think there is a degree of them being a bit overrated at first and uh, i think another thing about them that i really don't like is a, a song they released called beautiful day and i can't tell you how much i dislike that song you know it really is such a such a, a song that i i resent completely. I remember the first time I heard her actually, I, I didn't mind, I was kind of indifferent, I thought, you know, it was just whatever, and I, I, I heard her and I thought, you know, I, I could quite happily never hear that song again, even though I didn't hate it, but it was just like whatever, you know, quite honestly. But then, uh, unfortunately, every radio DJ in the world, it feels like, decided they were going to play it constantly, and it got overplayed, it was very much a victim of that. And uh, I just I just really grew to hate it for that reason. And another thing as well, which is kind of unusual, something you don't often hear about overplayed songs, is that, yeah, it was overplayed on the radio, but it was also overplayed at football stadiums, which is a weird thing to say. But it definitely was the case. You know, I worked for 13 years during uh, match days at a football stadium. And it wasn't a matter of if Beautiful Day by U2 would play. It was a matter of when, you know, before the game, during half time or after the match. It would always go a look in somewhere, and it was it was infuriating. It really wasn't. It wasn't just the sh the, the stadium I was I was uh, working at either. I remember watching Match of the Day and listening to the radio or whatever, and I could hear you know bleeding into the press box and into the studio or whatever. You know, beautiful day. You know, kind of creeping in. It's almost like a, a vampire. You know, trying to creep in to claim another victim or 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 an eerie spectre clawing the window, trying to you know trying to snatch someone away into the into the into the night. And yeah, it, it was it, it just became a real nightmare of a song in a way for me personally, and it was almost. Like, uh, you know, why do I have to hear this song again? You know, why are they playing her again? You know, it, it, it came to that, you know, I became very sort of negative towards it and anyone who, who dared play it, you know, it's like, you know, of all the pieces of music that exist in the world, some of which could really change my outlook on life, why do I have to hear, you know, Beautiful Day, you know, again, you know, for what feels like the millionth time, you know, it's it, and also as well, a football stadium, what connection to music, you know, to, to, to football as, as that piece of music actually got, you know, it, 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 it's the lyrics in that song, you know, I've heard it a million times, but I've never heard any any lyrics that Bono sings that have any relation to football or connection with football, but it seemed to get to get a lot of playtime at, at football anyway, football matches. So anyway, we'll move on from from a U2 and, and a dreadful Beautiful Day song, which I think belongs in. You know, if I could pay a thousand pounds never to see that, you know, never to hear that song again. Sorry, I, I, I would pay it quite happily. You know, I don't mind other people listening to it as long as I don't have to hear it again. 
you know, it'd be money well spent. That's quite a lot of cash as well. I've got better things to spend it on, but you know, take the take the ground, and you know, that'll be it. That'll be the end of you know. I could listen to uh, you two quite happily. I could play them on shuffle without that song popping up and kind of ruining ruining my entire, I wouldn't say day, month or year even. So anyway, we'll move on to uh, the, probably the most controversial choice of you know this entire video indeed any any video in fact any probably the most controversial thing i may ever say in my entire life maybe and uh, the next choice i'm going for is is pink floyd yes pink floyd for me personally are a problematic band uh, and i've got to be careful what i say because recently i was at a john lydon question and answer evening a few weeks back uh, you know john lydon of course of, of, of the sex pistols and one of the things that was brought up that evening was uh, a, t a, a photograph that exists of John from back in the 70s in which he's wearing a t-shirt, a uh, Pink Floyd t-shirt, which he had written in pen at Mark or whatever. I hate, you know, I hate Pink Floyd, you know, on it. And uh, John explained, uh, you know, when it was brought up, that t-shirt, uh, that, you know, he... he, he didn't hate Pink Floyd at the time and he hasn't hated them since or whatever. He, he did that purely just to get a reaction out of people. You know, that was the whole point of it, really. That's part of what punk's all about, of course. And that's why he did it. Uh, and one of the things he found out, maybe the hard way, is that, you know, because the reactions he got from other people were, were pretty negative, actually. And he found out maybe the hard way. He kind of joked about this in all honesty. I don't think he was beaten up or anything as bad as that. Uh, but he, he found out that, that I guess the hard way and in a sort of joked manner that there's 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 two things that you don't uh, openly criticise in public in the UK. The first is the royal family, and the second is uh, is, is Pink Floyd. So yeah, I best be careful what I say really at this point on. But Pink Floyd are definitely a problematic band for me, without a question or shadow of a doubt, and uh, they're very much the other group. You know, I was talking about The Who being a, a 60s legendary group from the UK. And, uh, you know, Pink Floyd, you know, they, they're part of that category as well. And they're, they're the same deal. It's almost like the, the you know, Pink Floyd and The Who are, the, are, are two different sides of the same coin. You know, kind of think of it that way. And uh, just like The Who, I tried to sort of, uh, you know, go into Pink Floyd and I decided to... I'll, go out and keep an eye out for, for some of their records and if I saw any and I, you know the, the price was right or whatever I'd pick them up one of the albums I found was this it's Atom Heart Mother and I agree completely that this is not regarded as one of the best albums that Pink Floyd ever recorded uh, but it's an album that I think is, is perfectly fine you know I think there's some good stuff on it particularly side two but I do agree that this is not a good album overall you know I think I agree with the consensus on this although I think people have been coming around to this album more and more over the years but I think uh, generally I, 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 I think it's it's not a great album there's great stuff on it I think side two some very very good stuff on it but it's not an album that I think is great but this album is considered by many people to be great Dark Side of the Moon, not only one of the greatest albums by Pink Floyd, but you know, arguably the greatest album of all time, according to many people anyway. I wouldn't agree with that. This isn't even in my top 50 favourite albums in all honesty time. Probably not even my top 100. Uh, maybe not even my top 150 even. You know, it, it's just not an album I particularly love all that much. Every time I play this record, this CD in this case, it's it's always like uh, oh I'll give Dark Side of the Moon another go, you know it it it's you know see if I like it this time you know it's not like oh I really want to listen to that record I'll I'll, I'll stick her on, it's always like oh just give her another chance and when it gets to the end it's always like okay I did that didn't really do it for me this time maybe next time it'll it'll do it and it, it kind of just never does. There's stuff on here that's very good. There's things on here that I do appreciate and I do get why people love it so much. But for me personally, it doesn't do it. It's very much, you know, you know, these two albums are very similar, really. You know, you know, like I was saying, the two sides of the same coin. You know, these 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 records are very much two sides of the same coin as well. You got Dark Side of the Moon on the other, and you got you've got this album. You know, uh, who's next on the on the other? It's 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 the same sort of deal. 
and this you know I listened to this and I thought you know I'll, I'll you know pick up the other Pink Floyd records and that kind of thing and it just didn't really happen now I know one of the things that some people are potentially going to say in this video you know in the comments section is that you know besides you're an idiot and you don't know what you're talking about besides that of course which you know is perfectly true I agree but you know besides that there's going to be a uh, comments I guess saying oh you need to listen to this album you need to listen to that one and to some respect I do welcome those you know th those kind of comments because uh, you know because on the one hand I do uh, fully admit that I haven't listened to every single album and every single song or every single track of, of any of these groups you know I've, I, well I have listened to some of it so on the other hand I do welcome it. On the other hand, bear in mind that I probably have listened to these, uh, you know, to these albums that you're going to suggest. You know, it's not like I'm just featuring, you know, the the the, the albums and you know the the physical copies of these albums is the only the only albums I've listened to. I've listened to them off on the internet and things like that. So kind of just bear that in mind. Also, as well, one of the things that I think is worth bearing in mind, and it's definitely true in my case, is that I feel like how many how many chances do I need to give, you know, these groups? You know, in my opinion, I only need to give them once. You know, when I got into the Beatles, when I was a kid, I listened to one album and I became a fan, and I'm still a fan to this day. You know, the Stones are the same, Queen are the same, T-Rex is the same. You know, good old David Bowie here, he was the same. You know, I listened to Hunky Dory and I haven't looked back since. You know, how come it's not the same for these groups? How come I didn't listen to Who's Next and become... You know, a, a Who fan. How come I didn't listen to, you know, Dark Side, Dark Side of the Moon, and become a Pink Floyd fan? What's, what's, why are they different? Why is it, you know, maybe it's just because they're just not for me. Maybe it's just as simple as that, which is perfectly fine. You know, it's I, I don't have to like everything that everybody else seems to like. But uh, when it comes to Pink Floyd and just focus on them, I have listened to some of their earlier stuff. I've listened to some of their later stuff. And there's some great stuff, undoubtedly. You know, I managed to find some great stuff in Atom Heart Mother, which isn't even regarded as one of their best album albums. But uh, there's some stuff that I really like, but there's some stuff that I really don't go along with at all. You know, it's rarely left me cold. It's almost like there's a barrier with Pink Floyd. You know, I can only go so far and I can only appreciate the music to some extent. And then there's, there's just too much resistance. It's kind of like a magnetic pulse you know, pulling me away almost, you know, opposite end sort of thing. And it's, it, it, it feels kind of like that. I kind of have that feeling towards it. So anyway, that's that's Pink Floyd. We'll move on now to the final group that I'm going to be talking about for this section anyway. And it's none other than the Smiths. Now, I want to make one thing very clear when it comes to the Smiths is that I'm not including them. It's kind of a way of having a poke at Morrissey or anything like that. I know he is somebody who very much divides opinion these days, but uh, if I wanted to just poke a, you know, have a poker, uh, you know, Morrissey, I could have just stuck to his uh, solo career. And the whole point of this video is to talk about the music. I'm not here to talk about personalities or anything like that. You know, I could have quite easily talked about Bono and, you know, some of the things that he said in the past, because I know he's somebody who divides opinion, maybe not to the extent of Morrissey, but Nevertheless, you know, I didn't go there with when I was talking about U2, so I'm not going to go there when I'm talking about the Smiths. So, uh, yeah, I'm including the Smiths, all the Smiths music and, you know, you know, uh, you know everything to, 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 you know, Johnny Marr and all that, you know, every, every, you know the fact is the Smiths, to me personally, are a problematic band. And the thing is with the Smiths is that I do kind of get them to a certain extent. I do understand why they were initially popular back in the 1980s because at that time music was getting very synthetic, it was getting very plasticky. Um, the Smiths came along and they were very, you know, they were they were alternative, they weren't very alternative bands. There's no, there's no getting away from that. They were something different, you know, if you were sick of the regular pop music that was, you know, just, just kind of being thrown out by the record industry at the time. There was like huge amounts of crap in the 1980s, of course, you know, 80s pop was pretty awful, a lot of it. Obviously, some of it was great, but a lot of it was crap. And, you know, you, you can listen to that if you want, if you're into that type of thing. But the Smiths came along and they were, they were very much the alternative sound. And, you know, they had a more traditional setup. You know, they had a drummer. You know, they had a, 
you know, a guitarist, you know, lead guitarist and singer songwriter. You know, it wasn't just a synthesizer and, uh, and a singer and that's kind of it. Something like the Pet Shop Boys, not a knock at the Pet Shop Boys or anything like that, but you know, that was like the that was the way things were kind of going at that time. They thought that's that was the future and the traditional lineup of a band, particularly with the drummer. With, with those days were over, and yet we get the Smiths coming in. And, you know, the more traditional lineup, you know, and everything, you know, all the ingredients and everything like that, more traditional, you know, setup. So they were alternative, very alternative. Not only that, but Morrissey's voice was very different. You know, the way he sings, you know, lover or hater, he's very different, you know, vocal artist. And his lyrics were very different. And, you know, they went the typical pop songs about, you know, dancing or just love songs. They were kind of quite dark in places you know we all know about Morrissey's lyrics and everything like that so they had that to them so they were very very alternative and, and so I, I fully understand why they were popular in the 80s I fully understand why they're kind of popular to this day you know you get people who weren't even around in the 80s or the 90s even and you know they're fans of 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 uh of, of the Smiths, you know, they listen to the Smiths, you know, students and all that's very popular. The students, I noticed, they, they all seem to, you know, 20 year old kids, you know, or kids as far as I'm concerned. Anyway, I'm getting pretty old now, but you, you kind of see what I mean. The kind of, you know, the intergenerational, you know, the, the you know, the, 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 the fan base with, with the Smiths. And I reckon if, if the Smiths got together, yeah, there'd be a few older guys in there, older girls in there, but there'll be a number of, yeah, younger kids as well, you know, we weren't even around back then. So that's pretty rare for, for bands to have that, you know, musicians to have that, you know, cross-generational appeal. Uh, so, yeah, I kind of, and I, I think that's, that stems from the fact that, you know, they are, you know, they were alternative. They don't, their music isn't as, as stuck in the 80s as so many, uh, so much music was back, back in those days you know, in the charts. So I kind of get all that. I get all of that and I respect all that and I appreciate all that. But I don't like the music. It's as, it's as simple as that, you know. I, I, uh, well, I, I think that's maybe a bit too blunt saying that I don't like the music. I do like aspects of the music. I was listening to uh, the album, is it the, the, the Queen is Dead album, I believe. It's called often regarded, similar to Dark Side of the Moon and Who's Next, you know, they're regarded as the best albums of their respective you know, artist and group and that kind of thing. And I listened to that album. I was a few tracks in. I was I was actually really liking it. I was surprised how much I was liking it, and I was fully invested. And I was yeah, I was thinking this is this is maybe maybe I was wrong about the Smiths. Maybe you know I've I've, I've just been a bit ignorant or whatever of them. But then as the the album rolled by, and it's not a very long album either. It's 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 just sort of average length. And but as it went by, it started to grind me down. And to this day, I have never been able to listen to a Smiths album from beginning to end, all the way through without stopping. I always get a bit restless. I always get a bit bored. Similar to what you're probably feeling watching this video, in all honesty. But you know, bear with me. I'm trying to make a point here, you know, I, try, I, I just kind of get a little bit bored, I want to try and listen to something else, do something else, and, uh, you know, I can sit through some real crappy albums, I've listened to some awful albums in the past, but for some reason I just can't make it to the end of a Smiths album, and I think the problem is, the biggest issue with the Smiths for me is the lack of variation, and this is something that nobody, as far as I'm concerned, can deny, even the biggest Smiths fan, can't deny this they just generally lack scope you know it, it seems very much like they, they've got so much sound and they've got a particular set of themes that they want to cover and they cover them and then they cover them again and then maybe they deviate with the next track and then they go back and then they go back again and then they repeat and then they just, just they just seem to cover the same ground over and over and over again and i just find them very Monotonous. I think growing up listening to, to groups like the Beatles, for instance, and groups like Queen, Queen in particular, you know, you listen to something like jazz, and jazz isn't a, a, a particularly amazing, well, it's an amazing album, but it's not one of the best Queen albums, really, if you want to get truly critical. I think it's, it's, it's a pretty good one, but, but anyway, the, the, one of the great things with that album is the sheer amount of versatility in it you know you you, you get so much you, you know the first time you I remember the first time I listened to that album I couldn't believe 
what was here and really it was just it, it, you've got no idea what's coming next you know it just changes so much and maybe some people don't like that maybe that's one of the things that people just generally don't like but i love that kind of thing you know i'm a sucker for that kind of stuff that's really you know even if even if it doesn't pay off sometimes even if they, they do something which isn't great maybe or, or is a bit ill-advised or whatever I, I still kind of like it and i kind of you know appreciate that but with the Smiths, I feel like they, they cover the same ground over and over again. And you know, when a when a song on a on a Smiths album fades out, I'm kind of just hoping, you know, please, please do something different. Please do something interesting. You know, I've, I've Morrissey on the bagpipes and Johnny Marr on the steel drums. They'll do something. Just it doesn't have to be good. Just do something different. And no, it's 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 a, basically a repeat of track two once again, only a bit different. And I just kind of get incredibly bored you know again probably how you're feeling at this point watching this video but yeah i just kind of get just i just lose lose all interest and it's like oh come on guys just do something else just do something you know it's the same kind of sounds the same kind of crap in a way to a certain extent again and again and again and all our albums are kind of like that you know the better ones maybe aren't to the same extent but i just feel that way but in between all that, in between all the monotony and the repetition and the, and the drudge of it all, you do get a couple of tracks which I think are great. And I think if I was to get like a couple of tracks here and there from, and make a compilation, I probably would like that. But in terms of listening to their albums, I think their albums, for me personally, are completely out of the question. You know, they're, they're completely you know something that i definitely do not want to invest any money or time in in, in, in kind of getting me hands on because i just have no interest in, in, in kind of doing that and so if they come up with like an amazing compilation or whatever maybe i should check out one of the greatest hits or something like that but in, in terms of the albums that's my main issue and they're just general sound and i think one of the reasons why the smiths broke up in all honesty in my opinion is they just couldn't be they just couldn't face recording you know going to the studio and recording the same album yet again only with a slight different cover on it and maybe a few different variations here you know the same old stuff over again as they've been releasing for year after year but anyway that's my feelings on things so that's that's the final group i'm going to be talking about for this section I've still got more to do for the next video, so I've got more people to upset, and, 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 and you know, in that for, in that sense, for the future, and uh, you know, more people to wind up, and more people to bore, and you know, all that kind of thing. So, yeah, if you join me for that for another tedious, boring, uh, aggravating, uh, you know, video in the future, we'll kind of uh, we'll kind of leave it at that. So, thanks for watching, guys. I'll, I'll see you soon.